The Science of Sears Audiobook, by Fadi Gunnison. Chapter 3. The Eagle's Emanations. This chapter includes five different sections, and these are the following. The Eagle's Emanations. The Worlds. Breaking the Parameters of Normal Perception. The Universe as Being a Description. And the Universe as Being a Mystery. In the first section, we focus on the eagle's emanations. According to the seers, the eagle's emanations are the energetic tissue behind this visible realm, that keeps it up. The seers call them the commandments of the eagle. And with these commandments, the supernal power they call the eagle, governs everything in this realm and in other realms. In the second section, we talk about the other realms that the seers discovered. According to them, the inorganic beings which are the polar twins of human beings, live in these realms. The seers learn much of their knowledge, from the inorganic beings. So in the third section we show that, the seers want to break the parameters of normal perception, to reach the other realms and the beings living there. In the fourth section, we talk about the results of their discoveries about other realms. As a result of their discoveries the seers think that, this universe is only one of many possible realms, and not a significant one. According to them, it is just a description that could be broken by the seers, to pass to other realms. And finally, they see this universe as a mystery, as a result of their discoveries. But we show that in the fifth section, this universe and the other realms created by God, are not mysteries, but truths like the prophets and books of him. So there is no mystery in this universe. And God Almighty opens the talisman of this universe, with the help of His revelation. Section 1. The Eagle's Emanations. Don Juan says that, the new seers tried to understand how awareness works, and for this, they have developed a series of awareness facts. The seers call this sequence, the mastery of awareness. And when Don Juan taught it to Castaneda, he tells the following as the first truth of it. Our familiarity with the world we perceive, compels us to believe that we are surrounded by objects, existing by themselves and as themselves, just as we perceive them. Whereas in fact, there is no world of objects, but a universe of the eagle's emanations. Something out there is affecting our senses. This is the part that is real. The unreal part is what our senses tell us is there. Take a mountain for instance. Our senses tell us that it is an object. It has size, color, form. We even have categories of mountains, and they are downright accurate. Nothing wrong with that. The flaw is simply that, it has never occurred to us that, our senses play only a superficial role. Our senses perceive the way they do, because a specific feature of our awareness forces them to do so. Seers say that, we think there is a world of objects out there, only because of our awareness. But what's really out there, are the eagle's emanations. Fluid, forever in motion, and yet unchanged, eternal. So Don Juan states that, the universe is above all, a universe of emanations of the eagle. And he speaks of another tissue, that exists beneath the universe of matter. Don Juan also claims that, the origin of these emanations is the eagle, and that its emanations cover everything that can be known and unknown. So everything that exists, is essentially the emanations of the eagle. And the world of matter, is only one of the thousands of forms it can take. And as we explained in the previous section, what the seers call the eagle, is actually God Almighty. Therefore, what Don Juan calls the eagle's emanations, are actually the emanations from God. Subchapter 1, The Lord of the Arsh Say, to whom belongs the earth and whoever is in it, if you should know. They will say, to God. Say, then will you not take advice. Who is Lord of the seven heavens and Lord of the great Arsh? They will say, God. Say, then will you not avoid him? In whose hand is the realm of all things? 
and he protects, while none can protect against him, if you should know. They will say, God. Say, then how are you deluded? Rather we have brought them the truth, and indeed, they are liars. Quran. Chapter 23. Verses 84 to 90. In his holy Quran, God Almighty introduces himself in three different ways, these are, Lord of the heavens and earth, Lord of the worlds and Lord of the Arsh. Accordingly, this universe is meant by the heavens and the earth, while the worlds are the countless other realms that the seers speak of. And the Arsh, is the common texture of these realms, which the seers call the eagle's emanations. One to one meaning of Arsh in English is thrown. But in the Quran, it makes a reflection from this meaning, and is used as the place from where God Almighty commands the universes. And as we will explain below, the seers also call the eagle's emanations the commands of the eagle. And in the same way, the word Arsh is used in many verses in the Quran, with the word command. The most compassionate above the Arsh emanated. To him belongs what is in the heavens and what is on the earth, and what is between them and what is under the soil. Quran. Chapter 20. Verses 5 and 6. Another important phrase used in the Quran in relation to the Arsh, is to emanate. This is usually translated as God Almighty's establishing himself on the Arsh, but in fact, the main meaning of the word is to spread and invade, to cover. In other words, an expression fully describing the eagle's emanations, and their dominant power which Don Juan mentions. So what the seers call the eagle's emanations, is referred to as the Arsh in the Quran. And God Almighty introduces himself as Lord of the Arsh. And through this Arsh, God Almighty reigns over all these realms. Subchapter 2, The Likeness of Emanations to the Filaments of Light God is the light of the heavens and the earth. The example of his light, is like a niche within which is a lamp. The lamp is within glass. And the glass as if it were a pearly white star, lit from a blessed olive tree like no other in the east or west. Whose oil would almost glow even if untouched by fire. Light upon light. God guides to his light whom he wills. And God presents examples for the people. And God is knowing of all things. It is in houses, which God has permitted to be raised, and that his name be mentioned therein. They exalt him therein in the morning and the evenings. Quran. Chapter 24. Verses 35 and 36. Don Juan describes the eagle's emanations, as filaments of light that spread in all directions, vibrate and are aware of themselves. However, he still opposes their acceptance as a one-to-one -one filament of light, and says. That would be too simple. They are something indescribable. And yet, my personal comment would be to say that, they are like filaments of light. And Castaneda explains these emanations, by using the expressions of shamans as follows. What the shamans of ancient Mexico found out, when they focused their scene on the dark sea of awareness, was the revelation that the entire cosmos is made of luminous filaments, that extend themselves infinitely. Shamans describe them as luminous filaments, that go every which way without ever touching one another. They saw that they are individual filaments, and yet they are grouped in inconceivably enormous masses. The energetic fact of the universe being composed of luminous filaments, gave rise to the shaman's conclusion that, each of those filaments that extend themselves infinitely, is a field of energy. So these luminous filaments, which the seers call the eagle's emanations, are the common texture of all realms. And the seers assert that, the source of these luminous filaments, is the eagle. Similarly, God Almighty introduces himself in the Quran, as the light of the heavens and the earth. So these luminous emanation filaments, referred by Don Juan, originate from God Almighty who introduces himself, as the light of the heavens and the earth. And God Almighty guides his servants, who live in his way to his light. Subchapter 3, Emanations as the Commands 
we have revealed to you a spirit of our command. You did not know what the scripture is, or what faith is. But we have made it a light by which we guide, whom we will of our servants. And indeed, you guide to a straight path. It is the path of God, to whom belongs whatever is in the heavens, and whatever is on the earth. Unquestionably, all commands return to God. Quran. Chapter 42. Verses 52 and 53. Don Juan affirms that, Nagual Julian and many other seers, often call the eagles emanations commands. Don Juan himself reportedly chose to call them emanations, because of his respect for his benefactor having a strong character. But says that, in fact they are commands. Therefore the universe, is actually a universe of the eagle's commands, rather than the emanations of the eagle. And Don Juan clarifies this as follows. Seers who see the eagle's emanations, often call them commands. I wouldn't mind calling them commands myself, if I hadn't got used to calling them emanations. It was a reaction to my benefactor's preference, for him they were commands. I thought that term was more in keeping with his forceful personality than with mine. I wanted something impersonal. Commands sounds too human to me, but that's what they really are, commands. In explaining this situation, Don Juan uses a term called the compelling power of the emanations. What he means by this, is the commands imposed on eagles' emanations. Thus these emanations physically exist, but there are commands imposed on them. And the eagle through these orders, sustains all the worlds. Elsewhere Don Juan refers to these commands, as the intent of the eagle's emanations. And remarks that, we perceive as a result of the pressure and intrusion of intent. And we also have professed in the next chapter that, what Don Juan calls intent, is actually the intent of God Almighty. Therefore, what Don Juan calls the commands of the eagle, are actually the commandments of God Almighty. And the Almighty God recreates this universe each moment, with these orders named by the science of matter, rules of physics. And except for His will, there is no force in this universe, that can sustain these rules for even a second. God arranges the command from the heaven to the earth. Then it will ascend to Him in a day. The extent of which, is a thousand years of those which you count. That is the knower of the unseen and the witnessed. The exalted in might, the most merciful. Quran. Chapter 32. Verses 5 and 6. Like the seers, Islamic Sufis also call the world behind this visible world, that Don Juan speaks of, as the world of command. So behind the material reality we see ahead, there is a huge world of commands. And the Almighty God informs us firsthand about it, as the knower of the unseen and the witnessed. The seers perceive this situation with their own discoveries, and summarize it with the words tonal and nagual. They describe the tonal, as the witnessed aspect of the universe, and the Nagual, as the huge ocean surrounding and holding the tonal island. In other words, Nagual is the name given to the world of commands by the seers. And they even call their teachers Nagual, because Naguals guide them to the world of commands. Subchapter 4, String Theory Firstly String Theory, then Super String Theory, and now added, the theory of everything. And one of the most famous defendants of this theory, is the recently passed physicist Stephen Hawking. He says, I have spent the last twenty years of my life finding answers to the questions, of why we exist, and how we came to being. According to string theory, the substances that make up the universe which we call the particle, are actually one-dimensional vibrating strings, that resemble a violin string. Even though they are short in length, they are like the Milky Way galaxy and the Earth, when compared to an atom. And different particles emerge, according to different vibrations of these strings. Similarly the seers say that, the essence of the universe resembles incandescent threads, stretched into infinity in every conceivable direction. Those threads also vibrate as scientists have stated. And Castaneda explains them as follows. 
The most significant act of sorcery, is to see the essence of the universe. Don Juan's version was that, the sorcerers of antiquity, the first ones to see the essence of the universe, described it in the best manner. They said that, the essence of the universe resembles incandescent threads, stretched into infinity in every conceivable direction, and luminous filaments, that are conscious of themselves, in ways impossible for the human mind to comprehend. So both sciences mention similar things, but the main distinction between them, hides in awareness. We are perceivers, and the strings are aware of themselves as well, says Don Juan. But the science of matter does not accept awareness, and still maintains its main question, is God really necessary? They are trying to explain a mechanical universe without God or awareness, but in fact, they are trying to find a lifeless universe. Subchapter 5, Awareness of the Eagle's Emanations What's incomprehensible to normal awareness, is that the filaments are aware. I can't tell you what that means, because I don't know what I am saying. All I can tell you with my personal comments, is that the filaments are aware of themselves, alive and vibrating, that there are so many of them that numbers have no meaning, and that each of them is an eternity in itself. Don Juan says, what is incomprehensible to normal awareness, is that the filaments are aware. The filaments are aware of themselves, they are alive and vibrating. So according to the seers, there is no static dead universe as the science of matter claims. On the contrary, what is essential in this universe is life, and the universe exists as its carrier platform. The seers discover that, but they cannot express it fully. Don Juan says, I can't tell you what that means, because I don't know what I am saying. So the seers cannot make all the connections of the pieces of truths they found, since their information does not come from God. On the other hand, God Almighty proclaims that, everything in the heavens and the earth, praises Him. The seven heavens and the earth, and whatever is in them glorify Him. There is not a thing that does not glorify Him but you do not understand their way of glorifying. Indeed, he is ever forbearing, and forgiving. Quran. Chapter 17. Verse 44. Therefore, there is a vector in the awareness that Don Juan refers to. And this awareness is not a scholastic one, but an awareness towards God Almighty, who owns everything. To God belongs the East and the West. So wherever you turn, there is the face of God. Indeed God is all-encompassing, and knowing. Quran. Chapter 2. Verse 115. Just as the whole being glorifies God, the face of God is there, wherever we turn our faces. As everything heads toward Him, He is with us at all times. God Almighty is not far off the universe, as some think. He is here with us at all times. Therefore, this texture which the seers call the eagle's emanations, is not independent of God Almighty. On the contrary, is a place of his manifestation. So one of the apprentices of Don Juan, La Gorda, names it the kingdom of heaven, and wishes her soul to reach there. I was a religious woman. I could tell you what I used to repeat, without knowing what I meant. I wanted my soul to enter the kingdom of heaven. I still want that, except that I am on a different path. The world of the Nagual is the kingdom of heaven. La Gorda cannot make the connection, because she does not have a deep knowledge of the holy books, and thinks that her heavenly Nagual floor is something separate from God Almighty, but it is not. On the contrary, God Almighty brings all creation into being as a window opening to him and commands wherever you look, there you will see the face of God. Therefore everything around us, which are stated by the seers as unspeakable of, tells us about God Almighty, in a great manner with their own body language. Furthermore, when a human being perceives the energy essence of such beings, he or she also energetically confirms God Almighty. And Don Juan is incredibly afraid of losing this energy essence of the universe. Compared with losing the Nagual, death is nothing. 
My fear of losing the Nagual, is the only real thing I have. Because without it, I would be worse than dead. Thus when the seers adhere to the Nagual, they actually adhere to God Almighty. They perceive the kingdom of the heavens and the earth, and establish a connection with God Almighty, who is in fact its owner. And the loss of this connection with the origin of everything, is worse to them than death. Subchapter 6 The Universe as the Energy Itself The energetic fact of the universe being composed of luminous filaments, gave rise to the shaman's conclusion that, each of those filaments that extend themselves infinitely, is a field of energy. So the seers consider these luminous filaments, that make up the emanations of the eagle, as an energy field. And claim that the whole universe, is actually an energy universe. And Don Juan explains this situation as follows. Everything is energy. The whole universe is energy. The social base of our perception, should be the physical certainty that energy is all there is. Hence the seers say, this is first a world of energy, then it's a world of objects. According to them, there is a sea of energy behind this world of matter. And for Don Juan, the greatest skill of the seers, is to perceive the energy essence of objects. Is it possible to train people in such a fashion, Castaneda asks Don Juan. He replies that it is possible, and that this is precisely what he is doing with Castaneda and his other apprentices. So the seers call the act of perceiving the energy in the universe, seeing. And suggest that this is the highest skill they have developed, after a lifetime of discipline and training. The scientists on the other hand, are trying to discover the realities, that the seers have found by means of awareness, utilizing the means of the material world and they do not put forward anything quite different from the seers. They state that, matter is a condensed form of energy. And according to the formula of E equals to mc square, energy can be transformed into matter, and matter into energy. Therefore, both sciences speak the same language. Since one side handles the universe from the viewpoint of matter, it formulates energy with E equals to mc square and remarks that the universe is energy. The other side deals with the universe from the viewpoint of awareness, perceiving the energetic essence of objects, and says that the whole universe is made up of energy. The methods and world views of these two sciences are totally different. But they reach the same conclusions in the end, which is not actually a surprise. This is the reflection of the unity of God. And God Almighty uses these two opposite twins, to make the cross-check each other, and show the truth. Even if the truth, is different from what they think. Section 2. The Worlds According to Don Juan, our world which we believe to be unique and absolute, is only one in a cluster of consecutive worlds, arranged like the layers of an onion. Even though we have been energetically conditioned to perceive solely our world, we still have the capability of entering into those other realms, which are as real, unique, absolute and engulfing as our own world is. Their existence is constant and independent of our awareness, but their inaccessibility is entirely a consequence of our energetic conditioning. In other words, simply and solely because of that conditioning, we are compelled to assume that, the world of daily life is the one and only possible world. So the seers are aware of the other worlds, and their expertise is actually about these worlds. And as we mentioned before, God Almighty introduces Himself in the Quran, as the Lord of the Worlds. Subchapter 1, Humanity is the Unaware of the Other Worlds Human beings think that their interpretation system is all that exists, and they are unaware of the other realms, says Don Juan. Although this is true for humanity in general, Don Juan thinks that only the seers know it, because he is not aware of the Quran. Yet God Almighty begins the Quran in the second verse by saying, I am the Lord of the worlds. And besides accepting the existence of those realms, he says I am the owner of them all. While the Almighty God says so, Don Juan tells Castaneda about these other realms as follows. 
I know how difficult it is for the mind, to allow mindless possibilities to become real. But new worlds exist. They are wrapped one around the other, like the skins of an onion. The world we exist in, is but one of those skins. As you can see, Don Juan is obliged to call these realms mindless possibilities, in the face of Castaneda's prejudices. But as the Quran teaches us, these are not mindless possibilities, but absolute truths. On the other hand the science of matter, has only recently begun to speak of these realms, which the seers discovered centuries ago. Especially after the discovery of the expansion of this universe with the Big Bang, they began to produce theories involving other realms. However, these theories are still evolving, and they need time to build on solid grounds. Subchapter 2 The Realm System of Humans and Jinns Don Juan says, The seers have realized that the universe consists of opposing forces, that complement each other. And in the Quran, God Almighty expresses this truth that they have discovered, we created everything in pairs. And as a reflection of this, He creates the jinn, as the polar twin of mankind in our system of realms. Don Juan also says that, although there are too many realms to be counted, only eight of them are accessible to human beings. And mankind lives in the realm system of these eight worlds, along with the jinns that the seers call inorganic beings. Don Juan names the seven realms other than our cosmos as unknown. And he affirms that, although we cannot reach them under normal circumstances, they are within human coverage. Human beings can communicate with the beings of these realms, if the right techniques are used. And this dimension of existence, is already the expertise of the seers. Therefore, those who seek foreign living forms in the universe, do not need to go too far. They are with us at any moment. But because of our energetical conditioning, it is not possible to reach them, without applying the special techniques known to the seers. On the other hand, Don Juan calls the countless other realms as unknown, outside these eight realms, saying that these are completely outside the human talent circle. Subchapter 3, The Eight Above Them When the horn is blown with one blast, and the earth and the mountains are lifted, and leveled with one blow, then on that day, the occurrence will occur, and the heaven will split and open, for that day it is infirm, and the angels are at its edges and the eight above them, will bear the arsh of your Lord in that day. Quran. Chapter 69. Verses 13 to 17. In these verses, God Almighty describes the day of resurrection and the stages of it, that take place after the last horn having been blown out. Accordingly, the ground and the mountains are torn to pieces. And after that, the sky is split by losing its function and the door to the Arsh world, which the seers call Nagwal, is opened. And the angels take their places. And on that day, the eight bear the Lord's Arsh. So if you ask about this number eight, it refers to the eight realms, that Don Juan mentioned above. According to the Quran, not only humans, but also the jinn, the polar twin of mankind, are being gathered on the day of resurrection. And as described above, when the sky split, the world of continuity comes to an end. In this way, the first real meeting of the jinn and humans is realized. And these eight realms that Don Juan speaks of, are gathered together into an assembly, in the presence of God Almighty. We have already said that, Arsh is the common texture of the realm system of humans and jinn. Therefore the number eight, which is mentioned here together with the Arsh, expresses these eight realms that the seers are talking about, and confirms their important discovery. Subchapter 4, There is 19 on it. Indeed, it is we who sent down this message. And indeed, we will be its guardian. Quran. Chapter 15. Verse 9. The phrase about Arsh, that we mentioned above is important. Because in the Quran, there is one more similar expression, and it is said that, there is 19 on it. And we have learned today that, 
The Quran is enumerated mathematically, in hundreds of different ways with the number 19. Accordingly, there are verses with only a few letters, at the beginning of some Quran chapters. But what they really are, were not understood for centuries. Although many predictions were made, it was unknown until it was discovered in the last century. The secret of these letters was solved in 1974, and it was found that, there was a mathematical encryption, coded with the number 19 in the Quran. And what is interesting that, the name of the chapter that includes the verse there is 19 on it, is the hidden. And the chapter number of it is 74. And when you put the chapter number besides 19, it gives the discovery year of this hidden code, 1974. Thus the chapters in the Quran starting with these letters, are encoded in connection with number 19. And in addition to this, there are also dozens of numerical ciphers in connection with the number 19, in other sections of the Quran as well. Below are a few examples. Subchapter 5, The Code 19 and the chapter started with H and M letters H M A S Q Thus has He revealed to you, and to those before you. God is the exalted in might, the wise. Quran Chapter 42 Verses 1 to 3 The first example is the seven chapters starting with the letters H and M. In these seven chapters, the letters H and M are used 2147 times, and it is precisely 113 times of 19. What's more, if you add up the digits of the usage numbers of these letters, this gives the product coefficient of 113. Of course you may think, this might be a huge coincidence. So let's look at the next step below. Chapter 42 is unique in the Quran, since it is the only chapter having relevant code letters of 19 in its second verse. Accordingly, it has ASQ letters in its second verse. And again the sum of the usage of these letters in this chapter, is exactly the full multiple proportion of 19. Moreover, this unique chapter divides the table above into two parts, by giving the two tables below. And in each table, again the sum of the numbers of H and letters are full multiple proportions of 19, and the sum of the digits, is equal to the product coefficients. I believe this speaks for itself. And these mathematics equations show us that, this is not a coincidence, but a product of consciousness. And Quran is not a man-made book but comes from God Almighty. Subchapter 6, The Code 19 in the Chapter Mary, The Mother of Jesus K-H-Y-A-S This is a mention of the mercy of your Lord, to his servant Zechariah. Quran. Chapter 19. Verses 1 and 2. The first verse of Chapter Mary consists of the letters, K-H-Y-A-S. And in the chapter Mary, these letters appear a total number of 798 times, which equals to 42 times 19. Also in the Arabic language, each letter has a number value. And if you put the number values of these letters consecutively, as it is in the verse, the formed number 205,107,090, is also a full multiple proportion of 19. Moreover, God Almighty has determined the chapter Mary as the 19th chapter of the Quran. So it is very unique and important. And because of this importance, this chapter is dedicated to Jesus and his mother Mary. Subchapter 7, The Code 19 in God's Mercy In the Quran, there are a total of 114 chapters, which is again a full multiple proportion of 19. And the phrase in the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful, is also used 114 times in the Quran. The importance of this phrase is that, it is almost found at the head of all chapters, and makes their openings. So it is a very important phrase, and gives the fundamental features of God Almighty. 
And again, it is coded with number 19. Firstly, this phrase consists of 19 letters. In addition, each of the four words that make it up, is repeated in the Quran as the exact multiples of 19. God 2698 times, the most compassionate 57 times, the most merciful 114 times, and name 19 times. All of them are the exact multiples of 19. Moreover, the most compassionate, the most merciful and God, are among the names of God Almighty. And interestingly, only four of nearly a hundred names of God in the Quran, are used as the exact multiples of 19. These are, God, the most compassionate, the most merciful, and witness. Witness is used 19 times in the Quran, in the same number with the word name. So we can say that, witness is used instead of the word name in the previous table. And with this relation, apparently God Almighty proclaims, be a witness that God is the most compassionate and the most merciful. Should you have heard before that, God's blessings could be proven mathematically, you probably wouldn't believe it. I really want to believe in God, but I wish we had an objective evidence, says Carl Sagan. Today hundreds of relationships with this coding, have been discovered in the Quran and there are things that even human memory cannot take. Moreover, anyone can see them at any time. So God Almighty has already sent the objective proof, that Carl Sagan wanted. And let alone changing a word of the Quran, it is not possible to change the location of one letter. Thus God Almighty has coded the Quran in hundreds of ways, protecting it against any distortion. Subchapter 8 God's Arsh is upon water. There is another statement in the Quran regarding the Arsh, which also confirms the seer statements about the Nagwal, and has not yet been fully understood till today. In a verse the Quran says, His Arsh is upon water. And we think that this expression can be better understood, in the light of the discoveries made by the seers. Don Juan says that, water had been given to us not only for life, but also as a link to the other seven realms. In the instance of the water practices, the old seers were convinced that, it was humanly possible to be transported bodily by the fluidity of water anywhere, between this level of ours and the other seven levels below. Or to be transported in essence anywhere on this level, along the watercourse of a river in either direction. They used accordingly, running water to be transported on this level of ours, and the water of deep lakes or that of waterholes to be transported to the depths. So the seers can use water as a gate, and communicate with the jinns they call inorganic beings or allies. Don Juan calls this technique, a knock on their door. And the seers have their apprentices practice this technique, during their ally training. Don Juan takes Castaneda to some water sources, to communicate with inorganic beings, in the early days of his apprenticeship. Where the former helps the latter, make contact with inorganic beings, that make water the gateway. So as the seers have discovered, God Almighty brings into being water, not only as a source of life, but also as a gateway to the common texture of the worlds. Enabling it to communicate with the beings living in other realms. But there is still a nuance between the seers, and the statements used by God Almighty. Although Don Juan uses a passive phrase saying, water had been given to us as a link, he does not declare who gave it. On the other hand, God Almighty introduces himself, as the owner of the Arsh, and proclaims I am the owner of all these realms, and the window between them. Therefore, the seers are discovering the existing once again, and Almighty God is the only owner of that existing. Subchapter 9, The Ambiguous Verses in the Quran It is he who has sent down to you the book. In it are verses that are precise, they are the foundation of the book. And others ambiguous ones. As for those in whose hearts is deviation from truth, they will only follow that of it which is ambiguous, seeking discord and seeking an interpretation. And no one knows its true interpretation except God and who are deep in knowledge. They say, we believe in it. All of it is from our Lord. 
and no one takes advice except those of understanding. Quran. Chapter 3. Verse 7. The examples we have given above, are some of the ambiguous verses of the Quran, that is the verses which might only be comprehended with time. So God Almighty sends His Quran together with some ambiguous verses, as well as other main basic ones, to be read at all times. And these verses are being clarified by humanity as time goes on. Some of these ambiguous verses are the subject of the science of the seers, and the seers make them clear. And some of them are the subject of the science of matter, and Almighty God authorizes the science of matter to explain them. The heaven we constructed with strength, and indeed we are its expander. And the earth we have spread out, and excellent is the preparer. And of all things we created two counterparts, perhaps you take advice. So flee to God. Indeed I am to you from him, a clear warner. Quran. Chapter 51. Verses 47 to 50. As you know, our universe is expanding every moment. But until the 20th century, there is not even the slightest piece of information produced by humanity, that the universe is expanding. Even Einstein was not convinced about it, although his own equations told him otherwise. And he tried to invent a universal constant, to adapt the universe to his own ideas. And he said that it is the biggest mistake of his career. However, the Quran made this clear in the 7th century. And this truth it declares, could only be confirmed by modern science in the 20th century. Have those who disbelieved not considered that, the heavens and the earth were a joined entity, and we separated them, and made from water every living thing. Then will they not believe. And we placed firm mountains on earth, lest it would shake them. And we made their impasses as roads, that they might be guided. And we made the sky a protected ceiling. But they from its signs, are turning away. And it is he who created the night and the day, and the sun and the moon. All in an orbit are swimming. Quran. Chapter 21. Verses 30-33. In these verses, the Quran declares that the heavens and the earth were once united, and separated by God Almighty. Just like today's Big Bang theorists who say that, the universe starts from a single point. Almighty God also refers to the sky as a protected ceiling. To understand what this means, just look at the surface of the moon. If we did not have a protective atmosphere, the earth would be exposed to meteor bombings, just as it did on the moon. Also, if harmful rays from the sun were not prevented, not living things would be able to live on earth. And the last verse says. He created the sun and the moon, all in an orbit are swimming. As you know according to Einstein's relativity theory, every object bends spacetime, and every celestial body swims in that spacetime pattern. So, as the owner of the realms, God Almighty takes a picture of it and tells us centuries ago, not only stating that they have trajectories, but also proclaims that, they are swimming in that space-time. You see the mountains thinking them rigid, while they pass, as the passing of clouds. It is the art of God, who perfected all things. Indeed, He is acquainted with that which you do. Quran. Chapter 27. Verse 88. Among the verses of the Quran, which might be understood in the course of time, the most interesting one for me is the verse above. During my university years, I read a book called, The Great Misconceptions in Science. And one of the twenty events described in this book, was about the discovery of plate tectonics. It is Alfred Wegener, who first put forward the idea of plate tectonics in the early twentieth century, saying that Earth is not a single land, but rather a combination of various land pieces. However, this idea is not accepted in his time, and even considered ridiculous. Wegener dies before seeing that his theory is accepted, as the technology that can prove this idea has not yet been developed. Years later it is discovered that, the land is actually composed of fifteen plates, and that they act as an island, 
albeit slowly on the magma. Today these are obvious facts, but now, please put yourself in the place of Prophet Muhammad, and think for a moment. You are in the middle of a desert, there are only barren rigid hills around you. And the verse comes and declares that, these hills act just as clouds move. What would you do, how would you explain this to those around you? And you have to wait 14 centuries, before what you notify is proved to be right. So the prophecy is such a thing, but we have no excuse anymore. As mentioned above, God Almighty gives these examples and asks, then will they not believe? And in the next verse, He gives the answer of it, they are turning away from the signs of the sky. Then what does the science of matter do? Does it turn away from these signs, even though it sees all this order, perfection and design in the universe? Unfortunately it does. Then is it possible to say that, despite all these signs, they still use their minds. Up to you to decide. Section 3. Breaking the Parameters of Normal Perception Breaking the parameters of normal perception, is the obsession of every man on earth, says Don Juan, and names it the unavoidable issue of mankind. Also he announces that, this is the reason for the profusion of drugs, stimulants, religious rituals and ceremonies among modern men. According to Don Juan, breaking the parameters of normal perception means, the entrance into unthinkable worlds of a pragmatic value, in no way different from the value of our world of everyday life. But why would I want to enter into those worlds? Castaneda asks. Don Juan answers him as follows. Because you are a creature of awareness, a perceived like the rest of us. Human beings are on a journey of awareness, which has been momentarily interrupted by extraneous forces. Believe me, we are magical creatures of awareness. If we don't have this conviction, we have nothing. Take my word, because mine are not arbitrary statements. My word is the result of corroborating for myself, what the shamans of ancient Mexico found out, that we human beings are magical beings. Don Juan's answer to the question what are we? Is we are perceivers. Then Don Juan continues by saying, human beings are magical creatures of awareness. In other words, human magic comes from being a perceiver, and from being able to use it, unlike the animals. Subchapter 1, Being Condemned to This World Don Juan avers that the certainty of this world, is regarded as an unquestionable fact, but it is actually a trap into which mankind, capable of perceiving many realms, falls. The seers say that we were forced into this system, by being born into it. But the seers learn to perceive objects as energy, and overcome this limitation. And according to them, not being aware of this, deliberately reduces the scope of what can be perceived, and makes us believe that the mold into which we fit our perception, is all that exists. On the other hand, the seers describe the universe as follows. It could physically be described, as a tunnel of infinite length and width, a tunnel with reflective furrows. Every furrow is infinite, and there are infinite numbers of them. Living creatures are compulsorily made by the force of life, to gaze into one furrow. To gaze into it means, to be trapped by it to live that furrow. Therefore, the seers try to change this situation which they see as a trap, by crossing these boundaries. And for this, they try to break the mirror of this realm, and move to the other realms. Subchapter 2, Breaking the Parameters of Worlds Don Juan speaks of the fact that we were forced into this universe, because we were born into it. And he describes it as a jail. The seers of antiquity have opposed it entirely, and chose to perceive the energy directly, thus opening the door to other realms. However, God the Lord of the worlds creates man with these potentials, but does not want them to use it in this way. Because the mission he imposes on human beings is certain, and wants the nature he gave to man to be used accordingly. Moreover, when one starts to turn away from this, one actually starts to persecute oneself. And we can see much of Castaneda's sufferings during his education. 
Therefore, human beings have no mission to relate to other realms, and learn from the jinns that live there. And in the Quran, God Almighty warns them, This is a trial, do not do it. But the seers do not listen to him, and walk straight in. Actually, the reason they do this, is not as the obsession of breaking the parameters of normal perception, as claimed by Don Juan, but the desire for immortality that God has placed in man. And as we will explain later in more detail, the main reason the seers are interested in other realms, is that they do not want to die. They are primarily trying to overcome this realm to get rid of death, but ultimately God Almighty does not give them immortality. Because they are trying to do it, in a way that He does not want. Section 4. The Universe as Being a Description This universe is nothing more than a description, says Don Juan. He asserts that the first job of a benefactor, is to pass on this idea to his apprentice, and explains this as follows. The first act of a teacher, is to introduce the idea that, the world we think we see is only a view, a description of the world. Every effort of a teacher, is geared to prove this point to his apprentice. But accepting it, seems to be one of the hardest things one can do. We are complacently caught in our particular view of the world, which compels us to feel and act, as if we knew everything about the world. As the seers reach the common fabric of the realm system, and other realms that are accessible to human beings, they are not based on this universe, but the energy universe behind it, and they declare this world a description. Therefore they say that, this is first a world of energy, then it is a world of matter. And they take energy as their base, and assume that this visible world is insignificant. Subchapter 1, The Insignificance of the Universe Castaneda maintains that, the main proposition of the seers is that, our reality is merely one of many descriptions. According to this, the seers discover other realms that are accessible to human beings, but since they do not have any knowledge from God, they make a wrong interpretation, and consider this universe and everything in it as insignificant. According to them, this universe is only one of many possible realms and therefore, an ordinary one that is no different from the others. Thus seeing all the human values, ideas, and religious beliefs of this universe as an obstacle, dump them into the garbage. Supposedly they reach such a great reality, that our world remains beside it in the desert like dust, and they no longer take what is going on in this world seriously. According to them, Love and morality are insignificant, like everything else in this universe. There is no difference between charity and evil, and they are all equal in the face of absolute eternity. Moreover, these are the ties of socialization that nailed us to our place, and it is not possible to reach other realms, without getting rid of them. Blessed is God in whose hand is dominion, and He is over all things competent. He created death and life to test which of you is best indeed. And he is the exalted in might, the forgiving. He created seven heavens in layers. You can't see in the creation of the most compassionate, any inconsistency. So return your vision to the sky, do you see any breaks? Quran. Chapter 67. Verses 1-3. to In response to the allegations of the seers, God the Lord of the worlds proclaims, we created death and life, to test which of you is best indeed. So this universe and its contents, are not such useless things, but they are all tests. And when the time comes, they will all be questioned upon. And to God belongs, whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth, that he may recompense those who do evil, with the penalty of what they have done, and recompense those who do good, with the best reward. Quran. Chapter 53. Verse 31. God Almighty creates the heavens and the earth, to determine who will do better work. And says that in the hereafter, everyone will get in return, for what they are doing in this world. According to this, whoever exhibits beauty in this world, will receive beauty by God in the hereafter. And whoever does cruelty, will taste the same. 
Therefore, the seers are again missing the point of equilibrium. As they have discovered other realms, they declare useless everything in this world. But God the Lord of the worlds, creates this world with an aim and examines us here. He adorns the heavens and the earth with signs that will introduce himself, and asks us to find him. Consequently, this universe is not insignificant or useless. On the contrary, it is the manifestation place of God Almighty, our introduction to Him. Subchapter 2 Considering the universe as insignificant, but seeing what they are doing as important. For me, the world is weird, because it is stupendous, awesome, mysterious, and unfathomable. My interest has been to convince you that, you must assume responsibility for being here, in this marvelous world, in this marvelous desert, in this marvelous time. I wanted to convince you that, you must learn to make every act count, since you are going to be here for only a short while, in fact, too short for witnessing all the marvels of it. Don Juan says, the world we think we see is only a view, a description of the world, and deems its contents insignificant. On the other hand he tells Castaneda that, everything he does in this universe is his last battle, and is very important. And he formulates this as controlled folly. In other words, he knows that he's doing something empty. But on the other hand, in order to gain energy due to human nature, he has to pretend to be the most important thing in the world. Therefore, the seers here again operate the rules of the universe set by God. But because they have not learned it from revelation, they go to extremes and fall into contradiction. They need to pay attention to everything they do due to human nature, but on the other hand, they say that what we do does not really matter. Say, whether you conceal what is in your breasts or reveal it, God knows it. And He knows that which is in the heavens and that which is on the earth. And God is over all things competent. The day every soul will find what it has done of good present, and what it has done of evil. It will wish that between itself and that evil, was a great distance. And God warns you of himself, and God is kind to his servants. Quran. Chapter 3. Verses 29 and 30. According to the Quran, human beings are here to win or lose an eternal life. Therefore, as Don Juan said, Everything we do here is incredibly important. But on the other hand, the blessings of this world are temporary. And here, besides the life of the hereafter, which is the main life, there is only a small blessing and a test arena, where only the samples of those blessings are found. Therefore, clinging to the blessings of this world, and struggling for them is without cause. Know that the life of this world, is but amusement, and diversion and adornment, and boasting to one another, and competition and increase of wealth and children. Like the example of a rain, whose resulting plant growth pleases the tillers. Then it dries and you see it turned yellow, then it becomes scattered debris. And in the hereafter is severe punishment, and forgiveness from God and approval. And what is the worldly life, except the enjoyment of delusion? Quran. Chapter 57 verse 20. So without being deceived by this world's ornament, praise and wealth, we need to ask for the everlasting one. And in doing so, God Almighty says to us, compete for good deeds with each other. Therefore, there is no controlled folly in this world, even though this world is not permanent. But the seers cannot make this connection, and they level down to insignificance all that they do while God Almighty demands us to turn this world into heaven, just like the hereafter. Subchapter 3, The Triviality of the Universe for the Science of Matter It is God, who made for you the earth a place of settlement, and the sky a structure with multi-layers, and formed you and perfected your forms, and provided you with good things. That is God your Lord, then blessed is God, Lord of the Worlds. Quran. Chapter 40. Verse 64. We have explained above the thoughts of the seers, regarding the insignificance of this universe, they have concluded as a result of their discovery of other realms. 
And what is interesting is that, the scientists have these similar ideas. Although they have just begun to speak of the existence of other realms, that the Quran spoke of 1400 years ago, their philosophical inferences are not very different from the seers. According to the recently discussed view in the science of matter, our universe is not unique. And it is one of many universes created by a mother universe, that could produce millions of possible Big Bang explosions. Based on this, some scientists who make philosophical inferences, say almost the same things as Don Juan. For them our universe is not special, because there are many others out there, and our universe is just an ordinary one. Of course, since these scientists are not free of ego like Don Juan, they also enjoy a secret pleasure in handling it this way, like Sigmund Freud. Humanity has in the course of time, had to endure from the hands of science, two great outrages upon its naive self-love. The first was when it realized, that our Earth was not the center of the universe, but only a tiny speck in a world system of a magnitude hardly conceivable. This is associated in our minds with the name of Copernicus, although Alexandrian doctrines taught something very similar. The second was when biological research robbed man, of his peculiar privilege of having been specially created, and relegated him to a descent from the animal world, implying an ineradicable animal nature in him. Just as Freud, today's scientists present these realms as a great discovery, and between the lines they imply that, all human efforts are nothing against this greatness. In other words just like the seers, they make man lost in the size of the realm system, reducing him to a desperate idle being. On the other hand, God Almighty is the owner of all these worlds, they have just started to discover. And he declares all of them as truth. So there is no such thing as triviality, but those who deny God Almighty, also deny his universe. He reveals these realms, that have been found as the result of thousands of years of efforts by the seers and scientists, just as in the second verse of the Quran, and introduces himself as the Lord of the worlds. Therefore he says, I am the owner of all these worlds, in which these two sciences only bear witness to their existence. Section 5. The Universe as Being a Mystery H. M. The revelation of the book is from God, the exalted in might and the wise. We did not create the heavens and earth, and what is between them, except in truth and for a specified term. But those who disbelieve, from that of which they are warned, are turning away. Quran. Chapter 46. Verses 1 to 3. The seers call their constitution, where they combine the basic principles of their teachings, with the name rule. And the first two principles of this rule say that, this universe is a mystery. The first precept of the rule is that, everything that surrounds us is an unfathomable mystery. The second precept of the rule is that, we must try to unravel these mysteries, but without ever hoping to accomplish this. According to the seers, this universe is an unfathomable mystery, and there is no way to unravel it. Therefore, the most basic proposition from them, is the inexplicability of this universe. They supposedly reach the vastness of this universe, accepting it only as a mystery that can be witnessed, but never explained. Since they have discovered other realms and beings living in them, the explanations of this world are no longer sufficient to them and they ignore the explanations and use the existing in practice. It is monstrous to think that the world is understandable, or that we ourselves are understandable. What we are perceiving is an enigma, a mystery that one could only accept in humbleness and awe. As the seers go beyond this universe, they are supposedly exceeding the explanations of this universe, and describe it as something witnessable but unspeakable of. But this is true only for the human mind, and what they overlook is the fact that, God Almighty teaches people what they do not know. Read in the name of your Lord who created. Created man from an attached embryo. Read, and your Lord is the most generous. Who taught by the pen. Taught man, what he did not know. Quran. 
Chapter 96 Verses 1 to 5 Almighty God uses this expression in the first revealed part of the Quran, and explains what He actually intended by His revelation. With the revelation He sent, He opens the talisman of this universe witnessed by human beings, and answers the question, what it is. The seers call it an unknown enigma, but God Almighty proclaims, it is not an enigma, on the contrary it is the truth itself. Subchapter 1 the universe as being truth. He created the heavens and earth in truth. He wraps the night over the day, and wraps the day over the night, and has subjected the sun and the moon, each running for a specified term. Unquestionably, he is the exalted in might, the perpetual forgiver. Quran. Chapter 39. Verse 5. The seers call this universe a mystery. But as God Almighty repeated many times in the Quran, He declares that He created this universe as a truth. So this realm is not a description or an unknown enigma, but a truth. And it is not created in vain. We did not create the heavens and earth, and that between them and play. We did not create them except in truth, but most of them do not know. Quran. Chapter 44 verses 28 and 29. God Almighty creates the heavens and the earth for a specified term, and to show the truth. He puts His signature all over them, then sends His revelation, and asks us to read the universe book by it. But the seers are enigmatic, because they deny the revelation which God has sent down. However, there is no enigma in the universe, and it is the truth itself. Say, who provides for you from the heaven and the earth? Or who controls hearing and sight? And who brings the living out of the dead, and brings the dead out of the living, and who arranges every matter? They will say, God. So say, then will you not beware of him? For that is God, your true Lord. And what can be beyond truth, except aberration? So how are you averted? Quran. Chapter 10 verses 31 and 32. The word truth is so essential in the Quran that, it acts as a litmus paper. Accordingly, God Almighty creates the heavens and the earth as truth, and introduces Himself as the truth. And again, God Almighty sends His books and His messengers as truth. Therefore, this universe is overflowing with truth, and God Almighty Himself, His books and His prophets are truth itself. And as the above verse says, nothing remains of the aberration after the truth, and what the seers call mystery, vanishes into thin air. Subchapter 2, All Things in the Universe as Being a Verse It is He who sends down rain from the sky. And we produce thereby the growth of all things. We produce from it greenery, from which we produce grains arranged in layers. And from the palm trees, of its emerging fruit are clusters hanging low. And gardens of grapevines and olives and pomegranates, similar yet varied. Look at each of its fruit when it yields and at its ripening. Indeed in that are verses, for a people who believe. Quran. Chapter 6. Verse 99. As a reflection of the fact that the universe is the truth, God Almighty proclaims that everything He creates in this universe is a verse, just like the verses He sent down to His prophets, and He introduces Himself to us by means of their help. He creates all things in a magnificent way, puts His signature all over them, and wants us to ponder over them. Therefore, this universe and its contents are not created in vain. On the contrary, they are signs for each of us. Indeed, within the heavens and earth are verses for the believers. And in the creation of yourselves, and what he disperses of moving creatures, are verses for people who know for sure. And in the alternation of night and day, and in what God sends down from the sky of provision, and gives life thereby to the earth after its lifelessness, and in his directing of the winds, are verses for a people who reason. These are the verses of God, which we recite to you in truth. Then in what statement after God and His verses, 
will they believe? Quran. Chapter 45. Verses 3 to 6. We all go on holiday, go around the sea or trek in the mountains. In fact, all of what we see in those trips, is a verse of God. Even though we are not aware of it, we actually go on vacation to see the verses of God, not the beaches or mountains. When we see them we say, nature is wonderful here, but in fact, there is no nature. They are all, the products of the great art of the Almighty God. In the same way, we comb our hair in front of the mirror, we take photos and find ourselves beautiful. In fact, it is God Almighty who gives us this beauty, but we do not think much about it. God Almighty gives it to us, so we can think of Him and comprehend His greatness. Therefore as the seers claim, this universe is not a description or a mystery, but a fact, which shows us God Almighty. And God the Lord of the worlds, has created it for a specific term and for a specific aim. We witness it for a very short time, and then we leave this realm. But its vastness and our smallness in front of it, do not require us to disappear. On the contrary, it shows us the greatness of God Almighty. E. L. R. This is a book which we have revealed to you, that you might bring mankind out of darknesses into the light, by permission of their Lord. To the path of the exalted in might and the praiseworthy. To God whom belongs, whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth and woe to the disbelievers, from a severe punishment. Quran. Chapter 14. Verses 1 and 2. God equips the heavens and the earth with glorious arts, and makes it an exhibition for us. But most people cannot see them, and they pass by without realizing it. Yet in the verse God Almighty says that, the way to go out of the darkness is to see the light, is to see the magnificence of the art of God in the universe. Because seeing these gloriousness, actually illuminates our inner self, and fills us with beauty. At the same time, we establish our connection with God, and thus we understand the greatness of Him, the owner of all praises. But those who cannot see them, are unfortunately trapped in their own narrow world. And in the end, they are addressed by the name of God, the exalted in might. Subchapter 3, Running After Certainty, While Describing the Universe as a Mystery The sorcerer's struggle for assuredness, is the most dramatic struggle there is. It's painful and costly. Many times it has actually cost sorcerers their lives, says Don Juan. According to him, the most precious thing for the seers, is to attain this certainty. Therefore, he always warns Castaneda who overindulges his doubts, as the following. You feel that indulging in doubts and tribulations, is the sign of a sensitive man. Well the truth of the matter is that, you're the farthest thing from being sensitive. It is one of the main goals of the seers in this world, to be free from doubts and become a determined person. But according to them, this world is an unknown mystery. Then can it possible both of them? Of course it cannot be. Because God is one, and the truth is one. And from micro to macro, its reflection is unique. In other words, as planets move around the sun, electrons circulate around the atom. And just as God Almighty created man in need of certainty, there is certainty in the universe, and there is no mystery. Therefore, as the methods discovered by the seers do not come from God, they again make mistakes and their teachings contradict each other. And the truth is told to us by God Almighty only, who himself is the truth. 